OK, so I've just gone through and adjusted the weights of those joints. So I'll just quickly go through and show you what they look like so you can try and match them in your scene. And again, I don't want to go through and I didn't want to record myself painting all these because it's pretty self explanatory, it's just a bit you know, repetitive. So, up here we have the eyes, and it's going to be on the same on the left to the right because I selected the mesh and in the bind pose, so on the first frame before there was any animation in there, I've used the mirror skin weight, so that's under skin, edit smooth skin, mirror skin weights, and I've done from the YZ plane, the positive to negative. I've just chosen influence one to one because I want, you know, one to one because I know this has been mirrored across. So, just checking this, the eye is just that general eye area fading off towards the antenna. The wrist, so this is the wrist joint. We've got, you know, the wrist and the palm. And then we'll go down these fingers. So each finger has their own different section. There might be a bit more skin in here. We need to remove some influence at the top of this because this is this is just the first knuckle. But you can see the general idea. Just painting the areas we need. But the right eye, it's going to be the same on the opposite side because we mirrored it across. So we move down to the snail base. So this is where it attaches to you know the the shell. So the shell base, sorry. So you can see we've got a large area there. Nice smooth drop off move down the ribbon to the base of the tail moving his way up and we've got the same here with the antennas so pretty much like all these ribbon spines what we're actually doing is just if I show joints just taking the joint in that area and just creating like a band of white around it and having a smooth fall off so working its way up as it comes around here I don't want the chest to be changing this top part because if you think about it, uh, the shell has the follow attribute, so it follows the chest. So if it's following the chest, that actually means that this joint here, as it moves via moving this control curve, if the shell is follow following, it's also going to move this joint. So essentially, moving the chest is going to move this bottom joint area, and also this top. So it's going to move them both. But then if we don't want the shell to follow, so we want the shell to get pulled off, you know, we can have that joint pulling this mesh further up. It's going through it again, all the way up. As we start to move up here, we want to make sure that it's going all the way around, but not having too much influence on these arms here. And the same moving up here. Okay. And then it's the same for the antennas. You can see here first to the second to the third we're just doing the same again going up each joint just creating a nice uh, band around it and that's going to continue up these joints and that will be the same on the right hand side ok so that's looking pretty good I'll just hide the joints and we'll just look at the animation that we did so those um, animation the range of motion we sort of added in there just to see the deformations. So we'll bend it down here and you can see the arms looking quite good, it's not crumpling too much. Might need a little bit more work in that area of the arm. It's always going to be the hardest part to do, as we said it's the most defor deformable, most articulated joint. You can see under his arm that's working quite well. We're getting some nice stretching, there's no pinching or too much stretching, it's working quite well. Just move through the animation. The arm bending back, it's looking quite good. But the wrist, you know, before this is sort of like a, a broken straw, like a you know a plastic straw that's been flattened or bent. But now we've got that nice smooth bend, so that's working quite well. Same with the antennas there working. It's not mashing up this face as much. Then over here we've got the fingers. So just in a bit of animation flipping through the fingers. So here we can see this last thumb. The thumb's moving down. But we can see that um, last finger over here. 
seeing a bit of deformation here that we don't want to see. So that will mean it will probably be these joints on the thumb will have some weighting over here so we'll need to go in and edit that. Same with the tail, just adding a bit of movement in there, a bit of twisting. So you can see this is working quite well actually. So we've got before we had like some really sharp movement so we've got a nice smooth curve going throughout that um, tail and before we rendered this, so I've just pressed free for smooth mesh preview before we render this we'll probably apply a smooth to it anyway so it's not going to be the low mesh that we're seeing here but this is the one we're going to skin with and then we'll smooth it before we render so that's looking quite good So I'll bring back the joints, I'll bring back the control curves. So one thing in here I just want to check is, is just manually move these about and see if we can find any other areas that are looking a bit weird. And straight away bending this um, chest forward, you can see here as I'm bending, if I just hide the joints we can see that as I bend this chest the back of the tail is also lifting up. So you can see that there, the back of the tail. So we might think this is a skinning issue and we might go in and try edit the skin but if we just display the joints for a second we can see that it's not a skinning issue because actually when we are rotating this that joint is actually physically moving up. So it's not that the fact that you know the tail has some influence to a joint up here it is actually following along with that joint so we need to delve a little bit deeper so that joint is moved by if we can remember it's moved by that nerve surface on the ribbon so if I bring up the extra to hide group I'll show nerve surfaces I'll just hide the mesh we can see here that yep it's moving that ribbon up so that's the reason for that happening there so again we've pretty much finished with the skin on the character. There's a few areas to fix up on the fingers and the elbow but it's pretty much there. So again we want to go through and just check these ribbons as well. So I'm just going to show, I'm going to hide the curves, nubs curves. So here we can see um, this is a chest joint on the ribbon. We can actually see, yep, there is a bit of, it might not show up in the video, but we can see a bit of white down here. So this is this is what's causing the ribbon at the bottom of the tail to raise up. So I'm just going to take the replace tool, set to a value of zero, and just paint that in there. I'm just going to bring my brush quite large give it a smooth fall off and I'll just start painting down here just to make sure we've got everything down there switched off it's not getting affected the same up towards the top of the head you can see there's a little bit in there so I'm going to remove that and we'll leave the chest area white because that's what we want it to control just checking again we're going to go through to the end I'm just going to paint up here and again, again we could do the same that we did with these antennas and bring up the component editor and manually input you know, values if we want but for this I'm just going to... for this it's working quite well you know we're not having any problems so I'm just going to clean this up now make sure... so this tail mid bit here I'm going to make sure the end it's got no influence on the end and it smooths into it and it's got no influence on the head and remove a little bit of influence from the chest. Smooth that back in there. Again with this um, upper body, we don't want it editing this chest down here, so I'm just going to remove it from the rest of this tail. Remove a bit more and then probably smooth it a bit. Again with the head, don't want, to eat, want more control left for the head, so I'm just going to remove that from the top. So yeah, that's looking quite good. Let's go back, show the mesh, show the control curves. 
and I'll just try that again. You can see it's got a little bit, it's still got a tiny little bit of movement, it's not as much. So I'll do the same again, hide the mesh. And what I can do here is actually do the component um, component mode method. So I'll select these CVs at the bottom. I don't want these to be affected by the chest, so I'm just going to go to Windows, General Editors, Component Editor. Make sure. So here we actually do see the chest. We have very slight, very, very small values, but they're still there. So I'm just going to select all these and hit zero to remove them. So these CVs are no longer affected by that chest joint. I'm going to switch my selection masks on so I can select this curve. And we can see now it's not moving at all. So that's, that's working how we'd expect. Okay, cool. Alright, so one ex extra thing we can start to add is um, I've gone ahead and done the same with the arms. So I've reweighted these. So if I just show the blend shapes. So if you remember we had that control control a joint down here, so this this bottom nerve surface. So as we move the control up, it moves the mid joint and these two end joints are just to weight it down. So I've gone ahead and done the same that I did with the antennas and basically input a numerical value with the component editor. So it starts from one on this joint and fades off and then it slowly adds influence to that mid joint. So that means we can get the exact same skin weights on the left and right, so we're getting the same uh, bendiness. Another thing I've also done is again the same as the antennas, I've added a tangent control and that is going to be connected to the scale of this. So if you want to set that up on these, you could just look back on the antenna control tutorial, it's just the exact same way, just creating that custom attribute and connecting it to the scale of this joint, so the scale X. So you can see that's changing the tangent which on the arm up here is going to change that. And I've also, so I'll set it back to 1, so the default of 1. I've also added the tangent control to these, the wrist and also the clavicle. So here we can see the tangent control is just going to adjust where the bulk of that arm is going to sit. So again giving the animator even more control. Okay so another thing we can do try to add more functionality to this and even though we've skinned this we can still start adding to the rig we don't want to add major edits like you know changing the mesh or anything like that but things like these ribbons so all I've done here is I'll just delete it and show you how we did it I'm going to select the ribbon and just hit control D to duplicate select its um, transforms and just unlock selected let's move this down here I'll move it down uh, negative 50, just a, a whole value. Okay, so again down here we can start adding blend shapes to this ribbon spine as well, the same that we've done with the arms and the antennas. So I'm going to take this nerve surface, pair it to the blend shapes group, and add another non-linear, non and we're going to add a sine wave again. And I'm just going to go show uh, deformers just so we can see that. So one thing I'd like to see is a nice sine wave on this character's uh, spine. So if you think like a snail meandering doing that sort of wavy curve as it moves along for this snail. So if we want the animator to do that he'd have to start, he or she would have to start you know animating these moving in and out left and right which would be easy enough to do, but it would be good as well if we just had a control that could add that on top. So that way, you know, the animator could just be doing the squashing stretch of this and layer that meandering, that sort of curvy, twisty spine on top. So to do this, we're just going to do the same that we did before. We create this surface, so I'm going to add it as a blend shape. Select the surface, shift select the nub surface. I'm actually just going to look at the arms and we call these rib blends so I'm just going to copy the name. So this is the blend shape for the arm. I'm just going to copy the name and 
as we create the blend shape for this I'll paste the name in. So create deformers blend shape. I'll just paste the name and this is going to be the rib blend back. Just so we've got consistent name consistent name conventions throughout this rig. Hit apply. Remember we need to change the input order because we skinned this first. So we we need to go to so I'm going to right click on it. Inputs all inputs and drag that blend shape, so middle mouse click and drag it below skin so make sure, because we skin this first, you, you always got to make sure you reorder it so the blend shape calculates first and then again I'm just going to switch the blend shape so it's constantly on ok so down here see what that gives us going to start adding some amplitude we can see this you know, acting on the mesh as we do it. So I've added a bit of amplitude to that wave and we can start to see how we can move. So we're getting that nice wavy. We probably won't have it, have it as intense so this is just going to be a really subtle control so the ampl amplitude will be quite small. So probably like uh, 0.2 or even smaller than that, just point 0.1 you can see that we could just add a little subtle bit of jiggling in there little subtle movements so again we could um, hook this up to the chest control so I won't do this in this tutorial because you've, we've done it before the antennas and the arms so you just want to do the same again go edit, add attribute and add those custom attributes and then hook them up to the sine wave in here but one thing we do want to do is we can see that doing this sine wave I'll just do the extreme the top of the sign isn't connecting to these eyes it's splitting it off our rig and the same with the end it's splitting it off the end it doesn't matter too much for the end because it's not connected to anything but it really matters for these eyes so I'm going to set that back to zero and what we're going to do again, select the um, ribbon spine, go to edit deformers and paint blend shape, paint blend shape weights tool, go to the options and I'm just going to remove, so we're going to re replace with a value of zero I'll go show, isolate, view selected so I can just see the nerve surface I'm going to remove it from the top and then smooth into it. So that way whatever deformations we apply to that blend shape at the bottom, it's only going to apply it to where it's white. So it's not going to so it's going to any sign that happens it's going to smooth back into the normal shape. And I'll do the same at the back. Smooth that in. So I'll bring everything back. And we'll just see that as we apply that sine wave can see here no matter what the sine wave do that extreme the sine wave is always going to come back to the eyes now we, we're never going to have this massive sine wave like that that's way too big but this is just for really subtle uh, jiggling about so we could increase the wavelength so it's quite large so you see here we can just add, add a little bit of swaying so we can just get a little bit of animation in there